I love this time of the year. It's superb with all of the um, indigenous, local native wildflowers coming out. And they're absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, all the bendigo waxes and the wattles and micromyrtus and just gorgeous things starting to flower now. And I've got lots of them on the block because I've got a kangaroo and rabbit proof and hare and wallaby proof fence all the way around. And it makes a huge difference. So yeah, it's looking spectacular and definitely my favorite time of the year. If you compare it to out in the bush, it's just like chalk and cheese. It's been browsed to death out there. Whereas in here, it is just beautiful. So you've done light burns yes, and, in autumn. And you've encouraged indigenous stuff coming yes. back. Yes. The weeds are eliminated when you burn in that early autumn. Or slowly, you know, if you do it a few times, then you, you get rid of the weeds and you just get the wildflowers coming back. Like we've got amazing areas of kangaroo grass now. We which were previously just not there. Ten years ago. Um, I sold Goldfields Revegetation Nursery and I thought, what am I going to do with myself? And so um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll grow cut flowers. That's a bit different. And so, yeah, I started and it's like an obsession now. Um, I'm growing lots of um, Western Australian plants um, that to grow them, I have to graft them because in, in Western Australia, they grow in deep sand very well drained and here I've got rock and clay and so grafting them onto a very hardy rootstock is the way to go for those and they do so well they're really really good um, and many of them are spectacular like they flower not now they flower a bit later on um, and particularly during summer the verticordias are spectacular but having said that, Darwinias are starting to flower now and I just love many of their red buds. They look superb. So this is Darwinia macrostegia hybrid, um, but there are many um, Darwinias, which are, I graft them onto Darwinia citriodora, which many people will know because it grows really, really well here. But um, they, on their own roots, they wouldn't grow. Very, very hardy. And pimelias. Yeah, as well. I mean, the local pimelias are absolutely gorgeous, but ones like the quallop bells and so on are quite spectacular. COVID lockdown, wildflowers have become so popular. People have become patriotic and people have been requesting bouquets of wildflowers. Uh, Australian native flowers and that's been hugely exciting because they were so underappreciated but I think people are now just starting to get the idea you know that it, and of course they are spectacular they're absolutely beautiful um, some of them are perfumed you know like the baronias and so on and then they last that's the other thing. Many people say that, well, I still got my bunch of wildflowers. They've dried superbly, you know, so they're just marvelous. My orchard is very, very productive. Um, not just at the moment, of course, it's just been pruned and weeded and uh, fertilized and mulched, ready for the next season, but we've got apples like you wouldn't believe the most beautiful apple trees lots of citrus um, and pears and cherries and nectarines and peaches and plums love the blood plums they're just beautiful and so I get I get we get lots of fruit that we um, preserve I freeze a lot of it but also I've got a dehydrator and it's just wonderful to have all that produce and it sees you through the whole year. The veggie garden is a very productive time. At the moment, I've got broccoli and I've got cabbages and I've got, I think I have to be the celery queen. I have got so much celery, it's unbelievable. So there's celery in everything. Um, carrots are coming on, they're not quite ready. I was late in doing them, but still they'll be um, they'll be ready later on. I've still got pumpkins and spaghetti marrow hanging from the arches. So that's a good way to store them actually, on the arches, leave them there. Masses of herbs out there as well. So it involved um, 
a bobcat and I, I said, you know, what pathways here, you know, I, I said, designed it in my mind where I wanted the pathways to catch water um, was, was um, one of the ideas there as well. And then as the pathways were just um, like bulldozed out, but not bulldozed, bobcatted out, um, the water, the soil that went um, to the sides was then mounded up. And so then I had mounded garden beds. And you'll see that I love sand as a mulch. Um, I've even got it here on my back back lawn. I mean, that is my lawn. This is, it's a great fire break because I have got National Park on three sides. Um, so, but sand is, is great. It doesn't burn. And, but also the plants love it because the water, when it, when it rains, just goes straight in and doesn't get shed off, which can happen quite a lot if you've got a, a deep leaf, leaf litter. And I love stone, so some of the beds have got stone on them as well. Um, so, and then I started, uh, then I started planting. Um, but one thing I have done, I did it last year, and that was we had a, we have got a big dam, which supplies all of our water, but the I had a small dam, and it was it would rarely ever get much water in it, and it was just an environmental disaster really because that bit of water would just evaporate and it was just wasted so I decided I was going to get it um, filled in I simply had no idea about the the logistics of that <laughs> but anyway I I thought it would be just a few truckloads but anyway it wasn't it was 76 truckloads <laughs> which is sounds astronomical um, but anyway that happened and so then I uh, put sand on top of that and planted um, a whole lot of cut flowers but also it's it's um, a view to my dam which I really really like across it and so there's nothing very tall there and um, yeah so it's going to be a bit like um, my um, Kings Park <laughs> wildflower gardens but it's got a lot of local local wildflowers in it because they grow the best I mean indigenous plants form the backbone of my garden um, and indigenous meaning local native form the backbone of my garden and then I just even to using the golden wattle just as that overstory um, just around here just the golden wattles here provide that dappled shade and yeah so I use them everywhere they're just fantastic in the garden so um, that's it. So 12 months on, that um, garden, that new garden bed, the dam one um, that was filled in, that's starting to look spectacular. It's starting to look really good. I've just recently done a whole lot more planting in there. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, so I can't help myself. I'm propagating plants all the time. <laughs> and um, yeah, I have a vision. I think, oh, I'd like that there. So I propagate them and in they go one of the zigzag wattles and it is just beautiful um, as a foliage through um, through wildflower bouquets just gorgeous um, Kakia multilineata absolutely gorgeous thing it brings in the blue-faced honey eaters for me every year they come just for this particular plant I've got other hakeas flowering but um, it's this one here that they absolutely adore Look at this fabulous wattle. It's Acacia Beckleri, the Barrier Range wattle, and it's just, it's got the largest flower of any of the wattles. And uh, again, it's just a lovely thing if you can, if you pick it and put it in floral arrangements. Or just a garden specimen, really. <laughs> many of the plants here are grafted to get them to grow really well because my, I've got clay. Uh, clay and rock and in Western Australia they grow naturally on deep sands. Well there's a whole lot of a variety of things happening in here. Um, the little plastic bags indicate that it's a grafted plant so I, d I do small cutting grafts and I find that I can um, produce a lot of plants that way. So when they've got roots on them they're, they're potted up. The bendigo waxes that I've 
collected, I've got a beautiful range of Bendigo waxes here on the property. So I propagate more of those to just put in my bush areas, which are really precious to me.